U.S. President Barack Obama is focusing on African food security on Friday as he prepares to host the Group of Eight meeting at Camp David outside Washington. The president is also scheduled to discuss food security and agricultural development in Africa during a special session of the G8 uh, with leaders from Benin, Ethiopia, Ghana, and Tanzania. Just a few hours ago, Mr. Obama addressed the fight against hunger in Africa, saying that uh, the world's wealthiest nation and organizations led by the United States States must step forward to help feed the continent's poor people. Instead of simply handing out food, we've partnered with countries in pursuit of ambitious goals. Better nutrition to prevent the stunting and the death of millions of children, and raising the incomes of millions of people, most of them farmers. And the good news is we're on track to meet our goals. As president, I consider this a moral imperative. As the wealthiest nation on earth, I believe the United States has a moral obligation to lead the fight against hunger and malnutrition and to partner with others. Uh, for more perspective on the issue of African food security and agricultural development, we're joined by VOA State Department correspondent Scott Stearns. Hello, Scott, and welcome to In Focus. Thank you. Now, the president did announce this initiative, three billion uh, plan to help uh, boost food security and farm productivity in Africa. How different and how significant is this program compared to what is in existence today? I think the biggest difference is that this money is private sector involvement, investment in small scale agriculture. It's not another G8 summit where you have countries saying, I'm going to pledge so much money to this or so much money to that. This is using private sector capital in some pretty big companies. Um, Cargill, for instance, investing in Mozambique, uh, DuPont along with Columbia University making some investments in Ethiopia, a consortium of uh, cocoa companies, including Mars and Hershey's, investing in new cocoa production in, in Cote d'Ivoire, in Ghana, in Cameroon, and Nigeria. But it also includes African uh, private sector. Echo Bank has pledged to increase uh, investments for small-scale agriculture. As you know, access to credit has always been uh, one of the problems facing African farmers on a continent where most food is, you know, 80% of food in, Afri in sub-Saharan Africa is still grown by small-scale farmers. Yeah, definitely. And uh, relief organizations, uh, Action Aid, Oxfam, Save the Children, and World Vision are saying, well, how about the G8 first start by, uh, you know, uh, meeting the existing commitments they have made over the years. Uh, why do you think this group seem to be skeptical even when there is this great idea being put on the table? I think there's reason to be skeptical, as we've seen both in APEC and G8 summits, sometimes pledges that are made aren't delivered. Uh, at this G8 summit at Camp David, they will make a report on whether they have met uh, their previous commitments, and so we'll have to see what they say. Those aid groups are also concerned, I think rightfully so, that this private sector initiative is made by profit-seeking private companies who are only going to invest in projects where they think a profit can be made and may not be looking out for, they're not in the business of helping people who may have immediate food needs. The White House says, look, this is not about replacing aid, this is combining aid with political capital to create conditions so that people in food insecure areas will no longer be food insecure, that we won't have to keep giving food to feed people, that their agricultural production will increase and they'll be able to feed themselves. Now, Scott, you actually mentioned one of the challenges facing African farmers is uh, credit. But we also know that uh, among the causes, the uh, root causes of, uh, uh, of uh, famine or uh, uh, food insecurity include uh, drought, then we have uh, violence, like in the case of Somalia. Uh, we have situations where we have a bad governance, even when there is no uh, violence. How can this challenge even the best of initiatives? Well, I think that one of the components in this private sector investment that I think will help is the focus also on infrastructure. It's many times African farmers who have a bumper harvest, 
their food rots before they can get it to market, either a domestic market or for an export market. Yeah. And that leads to, as you know, what is you know, generally a very poor network of ground transportation in Africa. So mm -hmm. I think we'll see, hopefully, some improvements both in ground transport, in cold facilities to um, preserve produce, to get those goods to market. Okay, and, and just very briefly, the president said this could create a green revolution in Africa. Is it uh, wishful thinking, or do you see it has the makings of what really led to the Latin and Asian uh, green revolution? Well, that is the goal, obviously, to try to mimic these green revolutions that delivered much of Latin America and Asia from food insecurity in the 1960s and the 1970s. The view is, if it happened there, why not Africa? Right. Well, thanks a lot, Scott, and, uh, you know, we will uh, rely on you to keep uh, giving us more insights and updating us on uh, whatever is happening at the State Department also. Well, uh, that's uh, Scott Stans, uh, the uh, correspondent. I was our correspondent at the State Department.